Um, other news, LeBron James. Do we have audio on this? LeBron James and Donald Trump are feuding uh, over the NBA, if you didn't see this already. And here's what I don't understand about the NBA in general. Uh, everybody keeps saying, oh, we don't care if uh, if people don't watch because they're upset about all of the politics going into the NBA right now. And I've been consistent on this for several years now. This is a stupid position for any business to take. If your position as a business is we don't care if we are turning off people who are otherwise fans of our business by doing something that has nothing to do with our business, that is next level stupid. Uh, and it's interesting, Jason Whitlock is in Nashville now, and he came over to the house, uh, and we hung out for most of the evening yesterday. And we, we had this discussion, which, which I thought is, is, is just kind of fascinating in general. And I've talked a little bit about it on the program. But if you are in the position where right now you're in the NBA and you are saying, I don't care about what some of our fan base thinks, we're going to be hyper-political, even if it costs us fans. This is the actions that someone who doesn't understand basic business is undertaking. Because it's hard to get fans to build up and care about your sport. And that certainly was understood by Magic Johnson and Larry Bird and Michael Jordan, who bequeathed to this generation of NBA players an incredibly successful brand and league that they built their entire careers turning people into fans of. And the NBA now has half of the viewers that it did when Michael Jordan was in its prime. Half. And people say, well, that's the way that, that sports works. Like, no, no, no. The NBA has way fewer viewers now than it had 20 years ago. The NFL has more. So the NBA has been losing viewers for 20 straight years ever since basically Michael Jordan stepped off the court after he hit the jumper against the Utah Jazz. We watched the Michael Jordan 10-part documentary that was, it seems like, aired forever ago. Uh, and everybody pretty much loved that because that was an era when the NBA was beloved in this country. Right now, the NBA is losing viewers hand over fist. And I think they are losing fans hand over fist. And the response seems to be, we don't care. We're embracing politics no matter what. And as a result, the sports that are embracing politics much less are seeing way more substantial growth than the NBA is, which basically is trying to hold on to the audience they already had before the uh, shutdown happened. Everybody else's ratings have gone up substantially. In terms of returning, there's a lot more of an audience out there that wants to watch sports than was watching sports before because people are starved for it. That hasn't happened with the NBA. So uh, Donald Trump pointed this out and said that he's opposed to players deciding to kneel. And by the way, it's not just players deciding to kneel. The NBA has gone way over the top. They have Black Lives Matter on the basketball court. They have social justice warrior slogans on their jerseys. And uh, they also are making the decision to kneel during the national anthem. So that's three things that are pretty substantial that they're doing that makes it impossible for the average person to just put on the television screen and watch a basketball game. And the general public is voting and saying, basically, we're not enjoying the way over the top decisions made by the NBA here. And... If Donald Trump were uh, making a more adroit argument, to me, instead of just saying, hey, I think that the way the NBA is behaving is turning off fans, I think he should be going after the hypocrisy. Because it's not just that the NBA is pretending to be a social justice warrior organization, it's that they continue to take billions of dollars from China. So if you're going to complain about things in America that are that are not perfect, which is certainly the case in every country, how in the world do you shut up and dribble for China? 
that's the most uh, fertile, to me, argument that can be made against the NBA. But LeBron decided to, that he needs to respond to Donald Trump. And by the way, the same media asking LeBron about Donald Trump has not been willing to ask LeBron James about China at all. Which is, I think, the analogy that Jason Whitlock made earlier this week that the NBA has basically created inside of the bubble their own version of a Chinese government because everybody who's a member of the NBA bubble is not pointing out these hypocrisies. But the minute that there is any opportunity to try and make America look bad, the NBA media is all over it. But here is LeBron asked about Trump and uh, and the diminishing interest in the NBA. I really don't think the basketball community are sad about losing his viewership, him viewing the, the game. If we, we continue to talk about what we want, you know, better, uh, won't change. We have an opportunity to do that. So the game will, will go on without <laughs> without his eyes on it. Uh, I, I can sit here and speak for all of us that love the game of basketball. Uh, we could care less. All right, so you could care less. But ultimately... If you're losing viewers, whether it's the president, who I question, maybe he watches a lot of NBA otherwise, I don't know, but let's pretend the uh, the president is a big NBA fan. If you are losing viewers because of something you are doing that has nothing to do with your business, that is the very essence of making a poor business decision. Because if your viewership is beginning to decline, and you are telling fans, hey, we don't care about you at all. I, I don't know whether the average NBA player and league member is not sophisticated enough to understand that there are many people who vote for Donald Trump that also like the NBA. Those overlaps are fairly significant. It's likely that you're telling tens of millions of people Uh, who are otherwise interested in your product, hey, don't watch, don't pay attention to us, solely based on politics. I just think it's a really, really bad move by the NBA that is going to cost them for years and years to come. Because I think there'll be a lot of people who are just like, screw it. If you care so desperately about how I'm going to vote that it impacts whether you think I should watch basketball, then peace out, see ya. Like, I would never come on this radio show and say, Hey, if you love Bernie Sanders, don't ever listen to my radio program again. I don't care if you leave. Like, no. I mean, I I would hope that even if you love Barry Sanders, you could enjoy Bernie Sanders, you could enjoy this radio program. And I would hope that even if you love Donald Trump, you can enjoy this radio program. Like, I would never write off millions of people who are otherwise potential viewers or listeners of my content based on your politics. First of all, because I just don't care. Secondly, because it's just bad business. I would never say, hey, we've got this awesome OutKick VIP, but we don't want anybody who uh, is uh, in disagreement with some of the things I say on the radio to sign up. No, the First Amendment is alive and well. To me, the answer is, I wish everybody would watch. I don't particularly care whether somebody has different politics, the game of basketball shouldn't really impact whether somebody likes uh, likes basketball. What you think about abortion shouldn't determine whether or not you can enjoy my, uh, my team play. What you think about tax policy shouldn't impact whether you can watch my team play. What you think about anything that has nothing to do with the product itself shouldn't influence whether you watch basketball. And in fact, if it is, that's a failure of our business. Like, if I came on Danny G and I said, hey, if you're going to vote for Joe Biden, never listen to my radio program, would that be a stupid thing for me to say? Oh, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, and I have to answer a lot of tweets throughout the week because I will get comments from some listeners saying, how come Clay will only have certain politicians on the air? And I always write back saying, I have sent out plenty of requests to Democrats as well as Republicans, as well as 
independents uh, to come on the show. So you do have an open forum, and I always point that out. That it, I mean, we had Tulsi Gabbard on, remember? Yeah. Um, we've had and people. Some people got mad. They're like, "Oh my God, she's running as Democratic." Like, I don't really care about which side of the aisle you're on if you're willing to come on and be honest with my audience. Yeah. Well, and I and I we talked about this last week. And regardless of what side of the aisle you're on or if your politics are down the middle, I was hoping that sports could just bring us all back together. And I hope we can get there. I know it's an election year, and maybe this is just the uh, the tip of the iceberg. I hope not. But I'm really uh, curious to see what's going to happen when the NFL comes back. Uh, I think the NFL is going to follow more in the NBA's path than they are in the uh, in the path of uh, in the path of the other leagues. And look, I think what we're going to see and the data is already starting to reflect it, um, is the more political a league is, the more people who tune it out and turn it off. And I don't think it's a coincidence that the PGA is going to, just look at the data, just look at the numbers that are going to come in this weekend, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The PGA is going to destroy everybody else in uh, in terms of viewership. And the PGA is going to have zero political statements that are made during the course of its uh, major going on this weekend in San Francisco. Meanwhile, the NBA is going to be the most political. And if you look at the differences in viewership of those two, the PGA is growing substantially its audience and the NBA is losing audience relative to how everybody else is growing. And I think, frankly, Major League Baseball and the NHL while they may have done a couple little things to be political in terms of returning, they basically have abandoned that. And as a result, I, I think you're going to see both of those leagues do better as well. Dub, is it dumb to tell people you don't want them to watch because you disagree with uh, with them politically? I mean, this is a very obvious question, like Danny G said. I don't, I'm not really sure what the point is in alienating a large percentage of potential viewers. It doesn't make any sense because less viewers – pretty much means less money. Less money for the league means less money for the players. And LeBron tries to be this guy that's, you know, trying to be a leader in the league, and this is something that is not really being a leader in terms of making money, which is pretty much when it all bo- when it all boils down what these guys are after. I mean, it's childlike, to be frank, when, you know, you're like, you're like oh, I don't want to play with you. Like, I'm going to take my ball and go home. I mean, America is founded on disagreement. It had, we have always disagreed throughout the history of this country. Disagreeing, there's nothing wrong with it. And what I hear all the time from NBA players, oh, we're going to be on the right side of history. Oh, we're going to be on the right side of history, right? That's really popular to say on social media. That's not true. You're totally on the wrong side of history with China. You are allying yourself with modern-day Nazis and taking their money, billions of dollars. We know that you are on the wrong side of history right now. China is on the wrong side of history, and you are saying nothing to criticize China, and you are criticizing the leader of the greatest democracy in the history of the world who everybody out there is going to be able to make a decision on come November. So, like, what threat are you under in America, zero, yet you're allowing China to threaten the entirety of the global world order, saying nothing about them and pocketing billions of their dollars. I just think it's it's lunacy. Uh, Eddie Garcia, you've been doing updates a long time. Is telling people, hey, you disagree with me politically, so don't listen anymore. Is that in any way an intelligent decision by anybody associated with the NBA? Well, I, I would say no, but I'm not surprised by it, certainly. I mean, that's this is the playbook we've seen uh, specifically the NBA reading from, uh, you know, this whole time. Uh, they're not – they're you know, the players are very empowered right now by what, what you know, uh, the commissioner and, and the ownership has allowed him to do with, with all the things they've done on the court and the demonstrations and everything else. So they feel they're on the right side of this, as you, as you said, talking about being on the right side of, a, of an argument. And so they've been empowered and, and they don't care right now about uh, – appealing to everyone it's just crazy to me and I, I think they're going to reap the whirlwind of a poor decision because I think after the election happens this is going to linger for a lot of people the fact that you are saying basically hey I'm not interested in your business if you have a different political view than I do that's what the NBA is saying there's a right side and a wrong side and you're on the wrong side and if you disagree 
go do something else. We don't care. Uh, I mean, that's so, so transparently awful of a decision from a business perspective. Not to mention that I think it's bad for our country when sports has typically been a refuge from serious things in life. I think the NBA had an opportunity. I think the NBA had an opportunity to grow its brand by people who just want to escape everything political, and instead they are going to tank their brand with a huge percentage of the American public, many of whom, and people say, well, those people weren't watching anyway. I disagree. I think there were tens of millions and are tens of millions of Trump voters who are basketball fans that will sit down and watch an NBA game as long as you don't try and antagonize them and tell them they're awful human beings, which is what the NBA is doing. I think it's going to be awful for their brand for years to come, and I think they're going to reap the whirlwind of an incredibly bad decision. But we'll see.